Hi, this is Brent Weeks uh, with the monthly Q and R. Um, hopefully, we're still in 2019. Um, last month, I teased you and said that this, the stopped clock, was uh, <clears throat> was foreshadowing. So I'm going to answer that question last. Um, <clears throat> Now, to, this month, I want to focus on shaking the table and wobbling the camera around. Also, um, just in case you hear screams, that is either Joe Abercrombie down in the basement, um, or it might be my children. So, one or the other. Uh, this month, we're going to focus on writing advice. Uh, apparently, some of you think I have something of value to add about that. We'll see. Uh, Brandon Yenzer says... Which character do you relate to most in Lightbringer? Um, alternatively, how do you go about creating different emotional atmospheres for the various characters? It's difficult for me to articulate what exactly I mean by that, but I remember feeling like I was going insane when the characters in the color prison <laughs> were doing the same, anxious from characters with severe anxiety, and powerful when a character finds their confidence. Um, first, thank you very much, Brennan. Um, that is a, uh, let, 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 let's say those one at a time. Uh, which character do you relate to most? Um, that is, is an excellent question. I, and I don't mean to dodge it. Yes, I do. Um, when I say I, I try to relate to most, whichever character I'm writing at, at the moment, uh, these characters are all uh, drawn from my own experience or from what I intuit of other people's experience of the world, and I try to put myself fully in their shoes. And certain characters uh, let me bring out sides of my own personality that usually I would try to keep hidden, except for from all of you. Huh. Um, so so, so I, uh, I really engage with a lot of different characters in a lot of different ways. And I try, even with the, even with the villains, to, to find something in them that makes sense to me, even if they're really loathsome um, in a lot of ways. And even if I continue to you know, disapprove of everything they do or certain monstrous things they say, um, I, I, I try, to, try to connect with how they understand themselves. Um, so how do I go about uh, creating different emotional atmospheres for, for the various characters? <sighs> that is a, uh, that's, that's a great question and, it, and it's, it's a great question because it's really hard to come up with a satisfactory um, answer to it. Like when I'm when I'm writing a character, I do just try to fully sink into how they're understanding themselves, how they're understanding what the other characters are doing or doing to them, um, why things are this way, and and look at how they're feeling in the moment. Uh, you know, is, is it a dark alleyway? Well, they're going to feel a little bit scared, and I just have to keep that in mind as I write. Um, and then the nice thing about writing, the really, really wonderful thing about writing, is you get to rewrite, and, and I get to go back and say, okay, well, that line of dialogue doesn't fit this character at all. Um, or th the way they express that is, is really nice, but this character doesn't have that kind of vocabulary. Um, so I have to think about whether I dumb that down or, or, or change it around somehow, um, and so forth. So, so, so it's just revisiting things to, to say, does this get across the feeling that I hoped uh, it would get across? Does this fit who this character is? And it's just, it's just work. It's just constantly going back and being like, are these characters actually, do they feel different from each other? If, if not, then you're just writing the same character over and over, and that's just bad craft. Um, so that's also why it takes me. Uh, quite a while to write these books is is I work on those things and I just go back and I take the time to do it. Uh, J C Lachance, Le, Le, Le Le Chance. I sorry, I, I shouldn't do that. Um, I'm just going to assume everybody's American. That's not very good either. Shoot. Okay. Well, anyway, J C from social media somewhere says, "Is there anything major in Lightbringer series uh, in the Lightbringer series so far that you regret having written in a certain way?" If yes, what would you have done instead? Uh, yes, yes, there is. Uh, this is this is a rather easy one because I've already confessed to it before, um, and that is uh, I forgot something that's pretty important, and that is uh, <clears throat> when I was writing Black Prism, I forgot this. That is, I might know a character, uh, and I might know 
what's going on with them and why they're acting a certain way. <clears throat> but if you have a bad first impression of them, you don't know that. It's like when somebody cuts you off in traffic and you're like, that person's an, you know, naughty word. Um, versus when you cut someone off in traffic because the kids are screaming at you and Joe Abercrombie's in the trunk and he's kicking and, and, and you're nervous and, and you're like, it's just a bad day for you. Um, you know, you couldn't find the right pliers at Home Depot and somebody found, that, sorry, no, I, I'm going to stay away from that one with a 10-foot pole and a noose. Um, <laughs> I didn't just say that. <clears throat> um, anyway, so you might be having a bad day. You don't think you're an a-hole, but everybody else does. Um, so I, I, I wrote a character and uh, I, I wrote um, Liv and I had her... Uh, having a young person's understanding of what the most powerful, the, the more powerful than she is, adults in her life were doing. And she, uh, she came across to readers with, with a much different, um, she gave a bad first impression to a lot of readers. And that kind of, that bummed me out because I really liked her and I knew what was going on for her and, and I had a lot more compassion for her than readers did. And I realized that, that was my own fault. Uh, I did not give readers um, the, the right background information early enough. I, uh, I, I made her look bad. And so I messed up. So I wasn't, um, and, and, and I, actually, I actually did change how I did some things uh, with the characters as I went forward. Because I, I realized it's incredibly difficult to overcome a bad first impression. And uh, so I, I, uh, I, I did some things differently as, as I went forward because of that. Um, okay, if yes, what would I have done instead? Well, I, I would have uh, introduced her differently. Um, Brandon from uh, Connecticut, because uh, you have a last name that I will butcher, um, <clears throat> said, hey, I just have to ask, how do you get the right dialogue action balance in your scenes? That's an assuming that I do, um, but I appreciate that. Uh, <clears throat> I, I try to go for what's most interesting, I guess, is, is it, what, what is the conflict in this, um, in this scene? How does, how, how, what is the most powerful way, powerful way to get that across? Some characters are simply more physical, so they're going to take out things physically. Some characters uh, think they can get away with things by being physical when, um, when ordinarily they're you know, having a, a conflict that would be verbal. Um, and, 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 and I try to show that, and I try to, um, <clears throat> sometimes I try to use uh, beats, um, th that is li little bits of action, um, to either undercut what a character is saying, or to, um, or, or to speak more, um, so that they don't have to say things that, that would otherwise be obvious in, in, in those kind of things. Uh, d just looking at for balance in the scene, as the scene goes along, do you feel like it's all just words or all just action? Um, it's, it's kind of an intuitive thing is, is the sad part. It's like, you don't want huge chunks of, uh, pages and pages of a single paragraph, right? Cause that just gets, it gets tedious to read. Same thing with, with action. A lot of times readers eyes will skip to the dialogue, um, but you don't want just constant dialogue. Uh, so, so you're looking for, for an appropriate balance. Um, uh. Meg Ark, I, I assume, uh, 1324, said, what sort of conflicts inspire you the most? Uh, is it Faulkner's uh, heart and conflict with itself? Gavin springs to mind, or perhaps some other type of, of struggle? An aspiring writer is curious. Uh, yeah, uh, Faulkner's, um, I think he, uh, he, did he just, he just won a huge prize. He, he, he gave an amazing talk about the human heart and conflict with itself, um, is, is I, I think like the wellspring of, of all fiction or something. Um, Faulkner's a, my assistant is saying mean things about Faulkner, which, which I think from what I've read are all true. Um, <clears throat> but that doesn't mean he's wrong about fiction. Um, so, so yeah, that, that, that is a, a huge, um, a huge inspiration, I guess, is, is what's most interesting in fiction to me is a great blend of, um, of external conflict and internal conflict and, and, uh, and bringing those two together and making growth to the internal person happen uh, through their external uh, circumstances and uh, effectuating those together. Sorry, that's a, 
That's Joe. Man, Joe, I'm going to have to punish him for that. Um, if you heard the screaming just now. Um, Br uh, Brian Bixler says, Brent, how do you approach writing female characters in order to make them well-rounded and dynamic? Uh, and my assistant put a little note on that. Uh, she is a woman, by the way. She uh, Here's a quote from As Good As It Gets that she adorned this with. How do you write a woman? Quote, I write a man. Then I take away reason and accountability. We're probably going to have to cut that part. <clears throat> Too much trouble. Um, no, I... I uh, um, honestly, it's it's just work. It's... Like, I work on it, and, and the the female characters, it seems to me, um, I, I hope that I've gotten better as I've gone along in my career at writing them. Um, but it often has just been, like, the most difficult characters to to write well, to, to get it right. It's like, ah, oh, I just can't nail this. And then I'll talk with people about it, and I'll talk to my wife about this, and, like, I'm just not understanding her well enough. Uh, what, what's she doing here? What, is, what does she understand for herself? And, and talking things, just saying things out loud, sometimes, you know, just listening, um, uh, t t talking with people in my life that I know, like, okay, how do elite female athletes understand this about themselves? And then, and then, and then sort of incorporating some of those insights into how I portray those characters. Um, it's, it's, uh, with writing characters, it, a lot of it is understanding that not everybody is like you. <laughs> And listening and observing the world around you and understanding how people understand, understand themselves and trying to portray that as well as you can. Um, I, I, I fall short constantly of that. Uh, but the good thing is that as a, as a writer, readers help you out and they, they build characters with you uh, from what you've written on the page. Uh, so I just continue to keep doing my best. Uh, and hope that you guys forgive me when I make missteps on all sorts of characters um, and, uh, and that we can build some awesome stuff together. And that's it for this month. Oh, oh, oh. I wouldn't tease you and, and go a second month without answering that. Um, <clears throat> the Stopped Clock uh, shows uh, our, uh, our projected date of publication. So it is at 1022. Look at that. Wasn't that clever? Come on. <laughs> 